We need more of the joy of the Lord. Oh, I love this this morning, that the worship of God and people are going around and, and, and hugging one another. And one lady looked at me and says, here in this church, we hug one another. <laughs> oh, a loving church, a happy church, a hugging church, a loving church, a happy church, a caring church, a church that reaches out and reaches out, a church that says, we're not going to settle for less, more, but Lord, more, we we'll give more of ourselves to you. That he would increase and we decrease. One time the Lord, he gave me a, a, a dream about his judgment seat, standing before him. That really gripped my heart. You know, so often the people are not careful without realizing it. And standing before his judgment seat without realizing it, that we can think, what am I going to receive? What will my reward be? Isn't that right? We can think that without realizing what we're thinking and attitude of heart. So one night the Lord, the Lord gave me a dream of my standing before this judgment seat. The change in my view of standing before Him. And I'm closing with this. There was all these people standing, they were, they were believers, standing before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And in the dream, it was like I could hear the Lord's heart, like his heart was thinking and speaking. And in the dream, he looked at these people that were standing before him, not all of them, but there, there was their little dream. He was saying this. Oh, they could have had so much more, but they settled for so little. And in the dream, there was like a sadness. He said, they're his children, they're born again. He's happy that they're there. But he was saying, oh, they could have had so much more. But they settled for so less. And then there were those that, that they just gave it their all. They didn't settle for less. They gave their all. I, I'm not settling for less. I'm gone for it, Lord. And there was such joy in his heart. <coughs> So in these days, I encourage all of us to give of ourselves more unto Him and to others. This church in California, my brother shared this with me, it was a, it was a larger church. All of a sudden, they, the church started having people getting cancer. A lot of cancer. It was unusual. So unusual, a church that had so much cancer. People were dying, announcing their, their cancers, and then announcing their deaths. So many. Oh, it's terrible. And then the, the, the leadership in the church, they said, we, this has got to change. So they started fasting and praying, and, and, and they said, we're going to fast and pray. It's word, until. That's the key word, until the Lord changes this. While they're fasting and praying, they're losing people. I've seen where people say, well, I tried that fasting and praying stuff, but I haven't seen any change, so I'm not doing it anymore. That's the devil talk. Mm -hmm. They had a vision for that to change. They had the vision, see the vision, and God gives us a vision. I want to stick with it and stay with the vision and see it happen. And not let anything discourage me. But they kept fasting, they kept praying, and then one day they got a report that someone was healed of cancer. And then there was another report, and then there was another. And, and they started getting all these reports of people being uh, healed in that, in that church. And the brother that shared it with me said, the testimony is that somewhere around 80 or 85% of the people with cancers that they 